So just waiting on Facebook. And then this can get started. All right, it is live. So this is part two of basically the character of the new man, the new creation in Christ. And so there's some weird ideas out there as to where a person or where their salvation is found, I guess. People equate their sol salvation to a whole bunch of different weird stuff, to, from church attendance to good deeds. And uh, the Bible is very plain in where a person's salvation is. Jesus even says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father but through me. And so where his Father is, is in heaven. And so, heaven is described in at least one well-known book of the Bible. That's the book of Revelation. And there's other references to it throughout the scriptures also. And it's a far more better place, far more excellent. Death is not found there. There's abundant life in heaven. The glory of God fills it, and so it's definitely a far better place than this side of creation, which is currently in a fallen state of being. And so, Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 13 state plainly, not in any difficult way, the criteria for salvation, or the requirements, or what a person needs to do. So, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach, that if you confess your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So there's no distinction between nationalities, upbringing, conditions of life, whatever it may be. The same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it is very plain. Jesus even says of himself that anyone who comes to him, he will not cast them out. They need to come to him in faith, and faith is action. They believe him for who he is, and they do according to his instructions. And he is the word of God, manifest in the flesh. The God-breathed word of God, he and his Father are one. And the Holy Spirit that comes to dwell in the believer is the Spirit of God the Father. And Jesus said he had to go up to the Father for him to send his Holy Spirit to dwell in us. And so, those of us who are of the household of faith, being doers of the word, not mere hearers, but we do the will of God, which is put forward plainly in the scriptures. And Jesus even put it in simplicity. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so, if you have any real comprehension of what that means, then the Great Commission means a lot to you. Go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preaching and teaching the word and the Holy Spirit will follow with signs following, confirming the words that you preach and teach. And this is in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. And God in the Old Testament even tells his people that this has to be the conversation of yours with your family, your, the instruction to your children. If you love God, you tell other people about him, if he really means much to you. 
if he is the foundation of your life, then he's also the conversation that you have. He, his instructions and precepts are what you live. If you've really built your house upon him, his word, his Holy Spirit, uh, if you really do mean it when you say that you are a Christian, you love God, and you do his will, then it's evident in your life and living. And invariably, there's going to be witnesses of this. People can confirm that, yes, you do live according to that instruction, that you are a, a good person, even an excellent person, a good worker, good work ethic, yeah, that they can't really say anything bad about you. The, the, that's what's going to be evident. But if you blend in with the rest of the world and its wicked ways, then you are not his, despite all of your insistence to the contrary. And even with, like, social media and all that, if uh, people are to look you up and they see that you're just as loose, rude, crude, socially unacceptable, not that political incorrectness is bad, but if you're in with the riotous, lawless crowd, then you are not of God. And so, God does things decently and in order. And he is not according to man's reasoning either. The working of his Holy Spirit often goes against the grain of establishments. Uh, human establishments and human government and man's attempt to take control out of God's hands. So, God... He does things in ways which the world sees as foolish, but the wisdom of God proves itself to be the wisdom of God, something far more excellent than anything man can come up with. And it is without argument. It is far more excellent. And so the people of God who have his Holy Spirit dwelling in them, the fruit is going to to become evident if he really dwells in you and you let him do his thing, you let him move through you, your words are his words, and you do according to his instruction, his lead, and if that is the case, then you'll be casting out devils, speaking in new tongues, laying hands on the sick, and they will recover, performing diverse miracles, preaching and teaching his word, telling other people about God. You will have godly character in every area of your life. You won't be joining people or in their riotous ways, their crude and perverse speech. That would actually, if he's in you, that disgusts you. And you do not partake of loose, wild living or any, any such thing as that. Sexual immorality violent ways, bloodshed, theft, that is far from you. And so, if you've repented of wicked ways, that means you've departed from those ways of the world, and you are now pursuing a different life. You're living according to a higher standard, that which is put forward in the scriptures, that perfect standard of the Lord God Almighty. So, that's the character of the new man, as described in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And there's other evidence that makes it evident that God is in you. And Isaiah chapter 12 has something nice in there. So, it's in verse 3, but starting with verse 1. And in that day you'll say, O oh Lord, I will praise you, though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In Jesus' name, Yeshua, or Yehoshua in, in the Hebrew, translates to salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of Jesus in you, his Holy Spirit, 
his word dwelling in you, that artesian well, that river of living water that springs forth from your innermost being when you have the Holy Spirit. So, verse 4, And in that day you will say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, and declare his deeds among the peoples, make mention that his name is exalted, sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, all, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. And so Psalm 1 also describes, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Those whose company is not with wicked people, these are the ones who are blessed. If those around you, your counsel comes from men of God, women of God, elders in Christ, who have walked that walk, who have borne that righteous fruit of the Holy Spirit, in their lives. If that's your counsel, tried and proven ministers of the Word of God, then you're on the right track to being blessed. So verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. When you delight in the Word of God, your thoughts are on the Word of God, your speaking is the word of God, scriptures, praise to him, worship, prayer, speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit. So th this becomes your all in all. So verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So despite conditions, you're still bringing forth that righteous fruit. You're, and God is your supply, and he is not limited. And this is despite conditions. You prosper seemingly inexplicably when the world around you is falling apart. There's calamity, destruction, war, and famine, yet you don't seem to be touched by it. That's right in line with Psalm 91. So... Those who are in the hand of the Father, no one can pluck them out of it. And so, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in condemnation, you will condemn. So, when you are of the household of God, and his child in his house, when the world tries to come against you, and rebuke you, and revile you, condemn you, and attack you to destroy you, then God's reply is against them, and you are in his hand, he covers you, and the wicked one cannot touch you. This is why you need to study the scriptures diligently, so you know what's available to you, and you can stand on that. It's your confession, it's your meditation, it's your declaration, it's the sword of the Spirit of God in your hand. And as the devil attempted to tempt Jesus, he used the word of God against the devil, and all the devil could do was flee from him. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Have on the armor of God, and be armed with the sword of his Spirit. And you need to be trained in it. And God does train your fingers for war. That's in yet another psalm, David who knew this well. So, verse 4, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And then, Psalm 144, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow, 
Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot forth, shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hands from above and rescue me. Deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of foreigners whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings I will sing praises to you, the one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David his servant from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners whose mouth speaks lying words, whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be pillars sculptured in palace style, that our barns may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields, that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. So... The Word of God, the Scriptures, the Bible, can be relied on 100%. It is the truth. God is true and every man a liar. And Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 14, In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror for it shall not come near you. God gives his people boldness. They do not have a heart of fear. They have power, love, and a sound mind. They are made bold when the Holy Spirit works in the person. Fear is far from them. No matter what odds you face, Jesus says, Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And... The strength of the believer is the Lord God Almighty. And it's not by your strength that you overcome things. It's by his. You speak the word to it, speak to the mountain, and it will move. And that's Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. And so, the power of the tongue is that of life and death, and those who enjoy it will eat the fruit of it. That's a proverb. So... Verse 15, Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it also says in verse 10, we have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. We have to pursue him. Nobody else is going to do it for us. We have to make the decisions we have to be obedient to the instructions put forward in the Bible. We have to be the ones who are doers of the word, not mere hearers only. It's those who do according to the instructions put forward by the word of God who are blessed in their deed. God backs it up, but his people must step out in faith. The just shall live by faith. That's what is seen throughout the scriptures. There's people out there that can talk a good talk, but it may be obvious that the fruit of righteousness is not there. 
and invariably, even if they put on a convincing face, eventually the act will fall apart, cracks will form in the facade, and the truth will get out. And beyond this, if you have the Holy Spirit, he gives his people discernment. God sees right through it. And he will make things plain to his people. And there have been many people who have attempted to reach out, but something wasn't right. Something was not kosher, as I like to put it. it, there, it couldn't put my finger on it, but there was a check in the Spirit of God. So I stood back and watched and waited. And eventually, they either moved off into something else, or they crashed and burned, so to speak. Somehow, it became evident that this wasn't a good connection for whatever subject it may be, whether it was people attempting to establish a friendship or trying to reach out for some other purpose, but there's been many through the years, and in different churches, out in the world, and so God protects his people. So trying to see what chapter this is, Matthew chapter 12. So verses 46 to 50. The people that Jesus says are his brothers and sisters and mother. So while he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside looking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? He stretched out his hands toward his disciples and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So, even the instructions to righteous conduct in your everyday life, in every area of your life, in all things, even that is the will of God, because Jesus says he is coming back for a church without spot or blemish. The Apostle Paul backs that up. Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the bridesmaids is good reading in that. So, John chapter 14, verses 15 to 18. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. And there is a scripture in the book of Romans, or the letter to the Romans. The Spirit that dwells in us bears witness that we are the sons of God. And as Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. And then what I just spoke of, the parable of the bridesmaids, the five foolish ones that did not bring enough oil knock on that door. And what they hear is, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. So you cannot be halfway into the kingdom of God or partially in or saved by mere degrees, or uh, any such thing, however you like to put it. You have to be all in, 100%, living your life for the Lord. And actually, actively, diligently checking every part of your life to make sure that these match up with what the Bible says, so there is no advantage that the enemy can take against you. That there's no gaps in your armor. First Corinthians chapter 3, And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babies in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able. For you are still carnal. 
For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For once one says, and he goes on as an example to the Corinthian church, of the divisions forming. I was baptized by Paul. I was baptized by Apollos. I was baptized by this minister. And so, thinking that a greater anointing came through this or that when they were deal dealing with mere salvation, not understanding the power of God. There's the baptism of water. There's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And as John the Baptist said, there's a baptism of the fire of God. And so... Three different baptisms, and so attempting to think of the different scriptures. But Jesus, he was baptized, and then the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Then his ministry began. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. When Peter was asked, what then shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts chapter 10, the house of Cornelius received the baptism of the Holy Spirit before they were even baptized with water. The reason being, they were already doing righteously. They were already being diligent in holy, righteous living, being generous to the people of God blessing others, and praying to God actively. They were devoted to prayer and good works. And so, when they heard the gospel, the Holy Spirit was given to them. They believed it as they were hearing it, and so God honored that. And so, the apostles say, why should we withhold water from these people who have received the same gift as we have? And so... The second example of Gentiles having more faith than the Jews, the first being a centurion who came to Jesus to have his servant healed. Just speak the word, and I know what will be done. And Jesus marveled, saying, I haven't seen faith like this in Israel. So, the baptism of the fire of God The tongues of fire descending upon the disciples. They were gathered together, devoted to prayer, waiting for the Lord to do exactly as he had said, fully obedient to him, and not holding back when they received that gift. Our God is a consuming fire. And like that scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, as well as Romans chapter 12, you are to be a living, holy sacrifice, and we have an altar from which to eat, that those who serve the tabernacle and the apostles spoke of their bodies as being a tabernacle that they were about to shed, particularly the Apostle Paul when speaking with Timothy in the second letter to Timothy. So, those who serve the flesh have no right to the altar, and they cannot receive the Holy Spirit for serving carnal, wicked ways. And so... If you're willing to be consumed by God, that everything gets burned away, all things of the world, all things that are carnal, that you can be pure and undefiled and fit for his use, then great things will be done with your life. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 11. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, 
to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was, he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, being able to attain and maintain self-control isn't the only thing. Perseverance, having that strength of character to persevere and overcome all hardship no matter its duration. And beyond this, godliness. This even speaks to your character. Being happy, joyful, peaceable of clean speech through it all, even encouraging. No one would know that there's anything going on. And if your focus is on ministering to others, not focusing on the problem, but actually being irritated that problems even exist because these hinder your ability to continue to minister to others, your source of joy. Because when you are able to minister life to others and get them saved into the kingdom of God, this is a great joy. And so, this getting into brotherly kindness, the love of God, that sacrificial love of God for people. So, If these abound, you will not be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of, your, of our Lord, Jesus Christ. For lack in any of these things means that there is short-sightedness and a lack of the strength of God, even to the effect of being driven around by conditions, circumstances, to the point of double-mindedness. And so, that is a lack of faith. Faith being demonstrated in obedience to the scriptures, even when everything would seem contrary to this. But you believe the word of God, and you're going with the word of God and what it says, and you're moving forward despite any obstacles. And God blesses that. He meets the believer when they step out in faith. And so that's what the scriptures point to. So, you need Jesus. That's how you can get started in seeing the excellencies of God. So, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Bible also reads, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and you are a whosoever. So, I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. Lord, bless these people with long and healthy lives. And make yourself real to them, Lord, that if they have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray they will do so now. So, all of you who need Jesus, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin, wash me, and cleanse me, set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you are risen from the dead, and that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. 
give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I tell you that all your sins are forgiven. Always remember to run to God, not from him, because he loves you. He has an awesome plan for your life. So, hope that helps you. God bless you.